which graphics card would you rather have? This one, or this one? The choice is pretty obvious, isn't it? No one in their right mind would pick the one in the boring black box. And that, my friends, is the power of box art. Allow me to take you on a journey fraught with excitement and nostalgia. This one isn't real, by the way, but they totally should have marketed crypto mining cards like this. To understand the magic of box art, you have to remember that stuff used to be a lot more physical. It was the box that you saw on the shelves, it was the box that made you buy things. And remember, back in the day, graphics cards were improving so quickly that by the time you got them home they were already obsolete, so it didn't really matter about the cards themselves. But the boxes they came in? They were forever. You'd unbox the cards and hang this on your wall like a trophy. Something to be proud of forevermore. And no company knew the power of box art better than 3DFX did with their Voodoo lineup. Now with today's perspective, you might just think that each new generation is a different coloured box with a close-up face on it. But you couldn't be more wrong. These boxes told a story, and the whole world waited on with bated breath for the next chapter. Would the man be wearing glowy paint? Would he be turning into silly string? Would he be on fire? That is how you market a graphics card, people. None of these sexy, tired-looking ladies. Young male gamers don't want exposed skin, oddly shaped breasts, or women wrapped in duct tape. No, they want a man with a burning face. This is how you sell your graphics cards. An exception could be made for Ruby and for several of the GeForce Tech Demo female designs, which were at one time the focus of the tech demos which were bundled with these cards. Ruby was kind of like a female James Bond, and the demos always looked far more like pre-rendered CGI than any game could at the time. And Nalu, as photogenic as she may appear on the box art, would quickly get tangled in her own hair in the tech demo. But they couldn't exactly use that on the box art, could they? But yeah, these characters were being rendered by these cards, and were essentially those graphics card generation's mascots, so I sort of understand how they earned their place on the box art as well, or even on the cards themselves. But this? No exception for this topless, green Medusa woman covered in goo who's doing her best to look AI generated before AI generation was a thing. Somebody went out of their way to make this, and it got the thumbs up from the marketing people who thought this was the best design they could put on their product's boxes. Bizarre. It really shows us how much things have changed. Allow me to introduce 90s box art. And nothing screams 90s more than this wonderful design. Child excitedly fist pumping, rainbow puke colours, 10 different fonts. Yeah, this is what the 90s tasted like. And let's not forget the creepy jesters, who back then were peak cool. Simply reading through this card's specs makes me feel unbelievably nostalgic. 4 megabytes of RAM, 220 megahertz clock speed, 64 bit bus. We've come so far since then. And last is this super cool character. He isn't just a commando, he's an evil commando. Two. This is how I envisioned every pro Quake player looking back then. Here's Faye Talwanty for reference. Since then we've seen all sorts of weird, wonderful, imaginative and experimental designs. This one for instance is half man and half carbon fibre wheelchair. There's this goblin who doesn't look cool or badass or sexy or anything. But damn it, somebody out there felt strongly enough about him that they put him on the box art anyway and you had to pay good money for this card. The Mad Lads even put this design on the card as well. Alternatively, you could spend a bit less, get the GeForce 260, and have this design grace your box art and graphics card. And then there are the aliens, but not cool aliens. We gamers were lumped with aliens who looked like they had failed an ET audition. And they even doubled down and used this same character again for their next generation of cards as well. Those were the days. So this box art is what happens when you can't decide on a design or font, so instead use all of them. And the Winfast lineup loved their startled wizard design so much that they used it not once, not twice, but three times at least. Palais. Or is it Palette? I never knew how to say that name. I assume it's French because of the frog. And they sure loved this frog design. As did I. I even had a card with this design on it. And I think it's a design that stood the test of time, with the perfect blend of cool and silly to resist any attack or scrutiny. In a way, I feel like graphics card mascots peaked with this frog in the armoured suit. A timeless design. Meanwhile, these look dated even at release. I respect the honesty of using box art that's probably rendered using the card inside, but this is taking it too far the other way. I swear this GeForce 3 was definitely capable of better visuals than this guy right here. And it looks like they zoomed in on a 10 year old flight combat sim for this box art. I really hope there are some good stories behind the making of these subpar images, because I don't Graphics card artwork. It feels like many bizarre older designs have probably been completely lost off the face of the earth, while others cling to the internet in the form of Google search results, but only in low res thumbnail form. Meanwhile, others remain in full view and resolution when their makers, perhaps rather they'd be lost entirely. But I still believe that all these designs I've shown in this video are better than a blank box with some writing on them. 
At least the designs I've shown you in this video have had some effort put into them. I'm not saying much, I'm not saying the end result's good, but if nothing else, these companies have at least risked embarrassing themselves for our own amusement, and that itself deserves praise. But a black box with writing on is dull. Worse than that, it's cowardly. Intel has recently joined the party and while their box art is far from exciting, it at least contains pretty colours and patterns on it, which I'd consider to be the bare minimum for box art to have. But to give Nvidia's reference designs credit, in recent years the graphics cards themselves have become sort of like the box art, and is where Nvidia has lavished their time, money and effort. And these days the graphics cards themselves look far more appealing, run far better and quieter than the blower designs of old did. So yes, this is a massive improvement, since the card is the bit you'll be using and seeing through the side of your case. Some of Intel's graphics cards even contain lighting. Box art never featured lighting. Point of view, the makers of many of the old, weird and wonderful box designs I've shown in this video have sadly discontinued their graphics cards, and now only do boring stuff with only slightly weird looking images. Does this signal the end of exciting looking box art? No. The dream is being kept alive by other third parties who continue to decorate their cards in excess fans and RGB lighting and to plaster edgy looking characters onto their box art. Others, anime. Others, homage to the older generations by featuring something like a robot or a burning eye or something. It isn't that box art has become more boring, I think it's just that the old boring designs have been lost, while the interesting ones remain. Likewise, you tell me which design will stand the test of time. Black box with words in it? Or the Radeon 580 Cute Pet Edition?